The sanctuary was established in 1992 um, to conserve and protect biodiversity, ecological integrity, and the historical uh, artifacts that are in the sanctuary, which are mostly shipwrecks. The sanctuary is approximately 638 square miles in size, about the size of Rhode Island. National Marine sanctuaries are really special wild places in the ocean that have been identified because of their underwater topography, their, the sea life that's there, the cultural heritage, the maritime heritage, so shipwrecks, whatever it is that's special about that place, the local communities have identified this as a special place that they want to protect, and then they've taken it to NOAA and worked together to have it designated as this special marine protected area. For our National Marine Sanctuaries program, our first and foremost mission is to protect these amazing resources, so the biodiversity, the animals, plant life, um, cultural heritage, maritime heritage, shipwrecks. So that's our mission. However, we do that while facilitating compatible use. And what that means in plain language is we help people get out there and enjoy it, use their resource, it's all of our resource, but do it responsibly, sustainably, ethically. It's an incredible place. It's one of the best places to see whales in the world. It's historic fishing grounds for 400, 500 years, probably many more even before that. Um, place where birds come from all over the world. It's one of the best buffets in the world. And the reason for that is the underwater, the seafloor, the shape of the seafloor, and the currents and the tides, and there's upwelling. And so all of that mixes the water around from top to bottom and brings up all this food from the bottom up to the top and vice versa. So there's something for everybody to eat at every level from humans on down. The word sanctuary is a bit of a misnomer. It implies that it's an area that people aren't allowed to be in or aren't allowed to fish in, and that's not, nothing could be further from the truth. We're, we're looking to promote sustainable uh, recreation, and that includes recreational fishing, and it includes whale watching, and uh, we want people to do it responsibly and sustainably so that it's available not only for our generation, but for generations to come. There's a, a, a significant component of boating, uh, the boating public that likes to go out to the sanctuary to view wildlife. Uh, the sanctuary has 53 different species of birds, 17 different species of marine mammals, and in addition, it just it's one of the best places in the world to go watch whales feed. This is their primary feeding ground. got all kinds of boaters out there enjoying the sanctuary. They're fishing, they're whale watching, they're birding, they're just enjoying a nice day out. And so we have a safe boating around whales campaign called See a Spout, Watch Out, which is a really cute way to remember just what the behaviors are for when you when you see spot whales or when you don't even spot whales, but to know where they might be and then to understand their behaviors and enjoy them, keep away from them. Um, we also have ethical angling, which is something that NOAA Fisheries works with and we're working with them as well. We have all kinds of wreck fishermen out in the sanctuary. They're really important partners for us. They know the sanctuary and the resources really well. They want to protect them. We have the common goal of making sure this place stays special into the future. And so ethical angling is a way of saying not just do what's legally right, but also what's ethically right. To keep the, if you're going to do catch and release, to release the fish, to allow it to live, to be fished another day, as they like to say. We have the wonderful fortune, but also the difficulty of owning our own place here. So it's an old Coast Guard station. It's a beautiful place up on First Cliff in Situa, Massachusetts. Um, and we've got a roof that needs to be repaired. We're still figuring out exactly how much that will cost, but that's about all of our discretionary budget for the year besides staff. The piles behind me are original equipment. They came with, they're about 85 years old and they're in need of repair. So um, uh, the costs for the repairs are a significant uh, investment for our program and um, there's something that we need to do, but uh, we need to figure out how to do it so that we can continue our operations here. We would lose um, the ability to store our research equipment in the boathouse here. We'd have to store that offsite. It would introduce tremendous inefficiencies in the way we would have to operate. And the way we operate, we have a minimal staff and we certainly don't have um, the resources to, um, to accommodate those inefficiencies. They're certainly in need of repairs and they're in need of major structural repairs and uh, 
it, um, it's not something that we can put baling wire and duct tape to and hope to operate for another 10 years. This is a very short term solution or we're going to start having you know, significant structural failures within the next three to five years. Being able to stay ahead of the maintenance curve for not only this pier but, but our, our facility as well, it would allow us um, the opportunity to focus more on education and outreach and, and um, develop our management plan, which is um, something else we're working on here at the sanctuary so that we can guide the activities not only of our staff but our volunteers and our advisory council. Boats are really our platforms out on the sanctuary to be able to get out, see what's happening, keep eyes and ears out on, on what's, what's coming in and out of the sanctuary and how, how things are going, and also be able to bring all that back. Images, video, just to get people excited about it if they're not out there, um, and also research, so data to use to help us inform management. And so with only one research vessel that's used almost, it's used really every day that there's a good weather day pretty much at this point, that's one of the things that's difficult. But we work with a lot of partners. We end up on their vessels. For example, whale watch companies up and down the coast allow our volunteers who do seabird research to go on the whale watches and to collect data that way. And then we share the data with them as well as getting to use it for us. So vessels of opportunity are really important. Um, but in the future, going the way we're going with so many people having so many questions about how to protect this special place and needing that research, you could see the need for more vessels out there. My, per my, my connection is very personal. Um, when, uh, before I uh, became associated, affiliated with the sanctuary, I took my daughter's whale watching. And to see the look on their face when they see um, a whale breaching uh, just a, uh, in close proximity to the whale watch vessel, uh, it, it's extraordinary. Having that sort of personal connection and making sure that not only my daughters can see this, but uh, hopefully their, their children as well.